Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 63 of our Let's Play series, War in the East 2, Stalingrad to Berlin. In this episode, we'll wrap up turn 33 um, and finish up the second half of the Southern Frontier. Uh, quick notes at the beginning, though. Uh, as a reminder, we're going to be having Gary Grigsby War in the West uh, coming to the channel very shortly here. Uh, that does look like it's on schedule to start releasing uh, next weekend. Uh, so that's the timing around that. And also with the Labor Day holidays, uh, you may see this and the uh, usual 1941 uh, video published a little later just due to some scheduling conflicts. But uh, if any of those are late, uh, they are still coming and we are still on schedule with recording. So with that, let's get right into it. Uh, we left off in the previous episode uh, having made a bit of a push towards Kursk. Um, and we commented, right, that, you know, Kursk, we're a little behind schedule, but it's it's going to be quite a few dominoes falling here as the the Germans try to account for Army Group North really being cut off a whole year sooner than it was really kind of historically, almost a year at least. Um, and down in the south, we just see there's a lot of opportunity here for us to break through where... You know, I think in the next couple of turns, taking Kursk and Kharkov is probably pretty realistic. I also think it's probably pretty realistic that we capture some of these other strategic points in the south, too. Um, so let's get right into it and see how far we can make it. Uh, this little pocket that exists here, I'm going to do some repositioning of units and such, but I don't know that I'm going to try too terribly hard to start pushing through with any type of vigor um, simply because we can kind of bypass these guys and if they end up staying it's just going to allow us to envelop them here with our pu push towards Kursk and Kharkov we could cut them off in a north-south manner um, so we, we really don't need to push through them we just need to make sure we maintain enough of a line here uh, to hold the front and then everything else on the flanks is pushing towards Kursk and Kharkov. So what we'll do is we'll have the 60th Army and we'll have the 40th Army uh, really make up that, that defensive line that we're building here. So let's start with that. And I think what we're going to do is take those two units up there. This guards unit will bring here. You're actually part of the 38th army, so I am going to reroute you uh, towards Kursk, actually. And we can take you off refit, because you don't need to be on refit anymore. So we'll take you over here. And then what we'll do is we'll take this rifle core, also move them up. I'm backtracking a little here on the action, but I didn't know that they were part of the 38th Army all the way over there. And then right here, we'll, we'll leave that guy where he is. That's fine. Um, just gives us a bit of a layered defense here in between. Uh, well, really, it's kind of our flank as we push towards Kursk. Then we're going to take these elements of the 40th Army and bring them down here. So let's take... I think both of these rifle divisions, we're going to move straight up here. And then 40th Army, we can take this rifle core. Where else do we have elements of the 40th? Over here. And these have been on refit, but I'm going to take them off refit now. Take that rifle division up here. You can come up here. All right. This tank core, I think I'm actually going to bring towards the south here. And then what we're going to do is with the 6th Army and the 2nd Guards Army. We're really just going to push straight through. Oh, I missed here. This is part of the 60th Army. So you know what we'll do? 
it's tempting. Maybe we can bring them up here. No, I'm actually going to bring them all the way over here to help with that push towards Kursk. That's what we're going to do. Now we get to the 6th Army here. This Rifle Corps. Really like to bring forward here. Rifle Corps can go there. The 6th Army we're going to try to have kind of be the northernmost edge of our line. This rifle division, I'm trying to find ways so I can make it all the way up there. I'm not seeing too many options. Let's see if we can get that rifle corps to attack here, maybe. Let's go right here. We're attacking blind, worked out just fine. It was just a portion of the 332nd Infantry Division. Uh, so we've managed to, to push through there all right. And I think we'll take this rifle division and this rifle brigade. Bring them over here. This mechanized unit I'm going to use to kind of get behind them. I'm sort of pushing forward here. I think we'll have the tanks follow. Right, so there they go. And then I can take this mechanized core down here. So we can start building kind of our breakout. Have back here another mechanized core. So let's have them come down here. So then this gives us kind of our defensive line. The third guards army, I'm going to have you kind of stick together here. Start breaking out all of these units. We have a rifle core there. Them up. This is going great. Now we take the third guards army HQ and we actually can move them forward now. You're part of the second guards army, which is down here. I think I will reposition you. I'm going to mm -hmm. going to do this in stages I think. So I'm going to take you here. And then what we'll do is we'll take the 5th Guards army, which is all these units in green. And I think I'm going to have the 5th Guards army push on towards Kursk. So we're going to kind of do a reallocation of these men. I missed this guy, which is part of the 6th army. Let's actually have him come all the way up here. Perfect. Yeah, I really want to get more there, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So... Just take you up here. You can come off refit because you're fine now. Make it up there. Artillery can start following suit. That HQ up here. And like I said, want to start. Bringing the 5th Guards Army forward here. So they can be part of the push on Kursk. You're part of the 5th Guards too. It's cannon artillery, so just have you go there. Now we have the 2nd Guards Army. Which I think will toss you to a refit status. You're on refit too, but I'm going to take you off now. Just misclick there. Now we're good. Bring you up. Take this guy forward. Ooh, he's hurting though too. 
Yes, we want to keep these guys on refit here on the HQ. Artillery can come up here, set them to reserve. The second guard's army. Take this rifle corps up here. There we go. So now we have a nice defensive line. Seventh guards to move south, keep them together. But we will have these elements of the second push here, which was easy enough. Now the question is, do we push forward with them? And I think the answer is yes. I think we do push forward. And other, one more element of the fifth army here, so I'm going to take them over. I have 44th Army, which is all down in here. Rifle Brigade and Rifle Division are both on reserve. Yeah, let's see. Let's take these guys off reserve. And have the Rifle Division move forward here. And have the Rifle Division go even further, actually. Have the Rifle Brigade come up. Mixing the 7th Guards and the 44th here. Okay, I think we want to try to push through. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack from this side here. Alright, that was successful. They lost 11 armor. Those Stug attachments? Wasn't expecting that. Let's see. Yeah. Well, Stugs and Ashhorns, really. Got it. Okay. See, now I can take this stack. We're going to move them over here. Perfect. These guys can push forward. Mixing the 6th and 7th here. So let's have you as part of the 6th come south. You can now attack here. Retreat it and route it. They had 1,600 losses. That is excellent. Bring both of them forward. Take all three of those forward. You are just way out of position. The 58th Army, so we're going to bring you south to where you should be. We're actually going to have you play a little aggressive there. So they captured that depot for us. 44th Army, we're going to make sure we move up the HQ here. 7th Guards Army. We'll have you come here. Again, we'll move up the 7th Guards Army HQ. Excellent. And then... So we still have sitting out here the 18th Panzer Division. I think we press. So I'm going to take these units and move them all forward. So that gives us 17 defensive values, so they don't even have... Oh, they do have 2 to 1. I didn't see these guys here. My goodness. Okay. Well, let's see. So this is 6 guards... Let's bring up the two Six Guards Rifle Divisions. Yeah. This is the 151st Guards. So what I think I'll do with them... So I'm gonna set them to reserve behind the lines. They're part of the army. Maybe if our... Um, leader is good enough here, he can get those guys in reserve support. Yeah, he might, might have a chance to that. We still have down here, seventh guards. How did all of these guys get so far from where they should be? So we'll bring up the 44th rifle corps 
then here we're gonna bring up 38th rifle division we're gonna set them on reserve too now I take this stack and I move them straight forward I think I think I move them straight forward here 26 defensive value should be enough even if this is a full panzer division which I don't know that they have another one of ready and available we should be good and then this sets us up for next turn being able to go after this second SS Latvian motorized brigade with all three of these stacks quite easily we could actually probably do it this turn couldn't we yeah yeah let's do it push them back very good very good weakened us a bit did weaken us a bit i think that was a good call though move up some of these hq units and over here we have to start looking at okay how are we going to deal with that guy being all alone there so i think we take this element of the 58th army move them up I'm not worried about these two I'm worried about that being a full panzer unit take up the 320th rifle division and here we're getting ourselves a little crisscross because these guys are part of the six guards they can move all the way up there but they wouldn't have any help would they would not have any help No, for now I think I just move them forward there. Over here. Toss that to reserve. Okay. 58th Army is all concentrated there. These guys can clearly go on the offensive. Let's take the Rifle Corps and have them attack. Alright. Another 700. Germans dead. Let's move all of these guys forward, and then what we're going to do is attack south. The reason we're attacking south is we want to put pressure on their defense of these two cities. To the north here, we're not going to impact Kharkov as much as we can impact down here. So that's the logic there. Here we have the 57th and the 58th army. The 57th army should be coming south here. So what I'm going to do is bring them down here. So that should help a little bit too with counterattacks from the motorized division they have. Take both of these guys forward. We then have them push through. Good. Another good victory have them attack here too. Romanian Mountain Division was committed and Hungarian Light, so we might not actually win that one. Oh, we did though. Excellent. And then we're going to continue pushing south here. We lost a thousand men. Look at that. I'm going to move you guys forward. And here... We're going to take these two units. And we're going to go after them. We're going to go after the 22nd Panzer Division. Oh no, the Wiccan SS Panzer Grenadier Division was attached. Oh no. Ah, oh, 52 armor lost to their 10. That's not good. That's just not good. Know what we're gonna do? I'll tell ya. We're gonna go again. Yep, we're gonna go again. Oh, they committed again. Ah, that might have been a really bad decision. We lost another 60 armor. So let's take a look at that now. Let's see if I did have two horrible decisions here. Lost 3,500 men in the first one. That's... That's nuts. Then we lost 52 armor. 
Let's see how that tank battle went down. Almost all of them, T-34s and Stuarts. Stuarts could care less about than least like tank. They lost. They don't even have any Tigers involved here. They lost Panzer Mark III, some Stugs, some Wesps. Okay. Second attack. We started having some KV-1Ss and we lost seven of them. But they're probably, they probably contributed to them losing more armor in that battle, if I were to make a guess. Yeah, so it looks like 14 of them were involved. Five had AP hits, three of them which destroyed their target. So it didn't impact it as much as I thought it would have. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that didn't go as planned. Well, we'll keep holding the line then here for the rest of this area. But what we are going to do is we're going to keep moving forward. So let's push you up here. I really, I really am curious kind of where their lines are drawn. Just, I don't know, but we're already getting real close here to their city. Take that mountain division up here. Take you to kind of reinforce there. You're both on refit, but we can take you off refit. Just want you go up there. So we have a nice line here. It is very empty, but it is a nice line. I want to see if I have something mechanized or, I don't know, something that can make it up there. Rifle division, maybe. Oh, Cavalry Corps? Where was the Cavalry Corps? Missed it. Okay, so they can get up to here. Did we take it? We took the city. Look at that. We took the city. All right. So that makes this all a lot easier then. So what we're going to do is just look in here. Yeah, I think we're just going to start moving these guys a little north, northwest. I'm going to move them up there. This army, HQ can move there. But the uh, 65th army is going to start coming north here. Okay. Let's just have you go there, I suppose. There's that. You can take that rail line and hex real quick while you're there. And you can start building out kind of north-south here where our line's gonna be. Let's get into that defensible swamp terrain where we have the chance to. Across the river there. Different army. You're part of the 28th. Let's get you up there. This cavalry corps we're going to take off refit. There. Rifle division, same thing, can take you off refit status. And you'll come here to the south. Excellent. So they're dealing here. Then we have the 9th army, which we're going to have... Hmm. I don't know 
if I want the Ninth Army to sweep west or if I want them to push north. I think I'm going to have the Ninth Army. Hmm, this is tough. This is tough. Let's zoom out a little here. We have the Ninth Army. It's the other army we have over here. We don't have another army. These guys are just all the hodgepodge of our defense over here. Yes, the Ninth Army is going to make up the rest of the frontier. That's what they're going to do. So they can go up here. They're not really building any type of defensive line that is um, terribly intimidating. But we are at this point just trying to stretch them and outnumber them as much as we can. Rifle Corps can come up there because I'm betting we'll have some resistance there. And a lot of these we can start taking off pretty fit. Start taking them off reef, and we'll start having them push. Excellent. Now you come down there. You go to refit. First, we're going to move up our HQ. going to be kind of an advanced scout there. Same thing with you, this rifle brigade. Okay. And then you guys, we're going to bring back home a little closer to where you all came from here. Like maybe... Take that guy there, thinking about having him assigned to one of these armies in the north. So we're part of the 47th Army right now, but both the 9th and the 28th Army would have room for them. I think they're probably more useful in the 28th Army. So we're going to do that. So we're part of the 28th Army now. Excellent. Over here, I don't know why that guy would be on refit, so we'll take him off. I think we'll probably start pushing out here. But again, kind of similar to what I just did, I think I'm going to move him up here. I'm going to assign him to the 65th Army. Do I want the 65th Army or the 18th Army? I'm going to assign them to the 18th Army. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a little better. I think come here. I'm actually going to change him to reserve in case they try to break through any of those hexes. It'll be a nice surprise for the Germans. Some of these guys, I think I will start pushing forward with a little. Yeah, so you need to be part of something else. Let's put you in the 56 army. The 56 army is where? Right here? You have folks all the way over here, too. So we're going to have to change that. For now, I think I'll have you guys keep pushing forward here. This so the 56 Army is just going to go kind of north here. might do is 
assigned some of you from the 47th over to the 56. 47th is already capacity. So let's take you and assign you. Ooh, the 56 doesn't have enough room, so we're actually going to put you in the 9th Army, which works out well enough. Let's rifle the mission. Can't remember what it was at. 56, yeah. Oh, well, heck, we'll toss you in there. That's fine. Yep, so then those are our guys. Probably assign these to a new HQ over here. Oh, we still have all of you in Mustafka, my goodness. Okay, didn't realize that. Over here, the 47th Army does have some room, so that's good. But I think I'm going to start moving the... 47th Army West. There we go. What we'll do is we'll take these guys, set them on reserve. It's a nice little surprise if they do counterattack. Part of the North Caucus front. It's not very effective. Okay. We can still have you move forward, I suppose. You come up there. Alright, so we're starting to run into their Panzer divisions. You guys are in the 37th Army, which is over here. Hang on to the 18th, so we really need to get you on this side of the thing. So let's... Let's bring you up here. Must have already moved you, and I don't remember. So we'll leave you there for now. 37th Army, why don't you come up here? Yeah, okay. I don't know that I want to move him forward yet. Really probably should, though. What if we take... Rifle core there. This isn't going to go well, I just know it. Okay, and we're going to attach these guys to the 47th Army, which will probably put them way over. Maybe not. Probably put them over, but not way over. Put you with anyone else? We'll just do. North Caucus Front. And I think everyone else is going to have to go to the North Caucus Front, too. You can make it in the 47th Army. Okay. These two rifle brigades I want to come over here and start building up the line. Okay. So that's already becoming a bit of a concern. Get you over here. So that's good. Let's, let's toss you there. Forty seventh Army move the HQ up here. Caucus front. Move you over there. 
then in Odessa. Oh boy, this is interesting though, isn't it? So we'll take that depot, thank you very much. And we'll take you forward, push you back. They held? What? That's not how that was supposed to go. Maybe that time we retreated. Take that mechanized motorized brigade up there. I think we will leave this rifle division in Odessa. Here we'll take this mechanized unit south. Capture that airfield at least. Move this tank core forward. Put some in a good defensive position. Move up this rifle core. We're gonna attack here. Don't know what's there, but we're gonna attack. So we captured the depot and forced back their HQ. That was a good result. We attack again here. May. Ah, uh, fortification level two. I don't know if I want to. I think I'd rather risk my chances here. We can't. That's fine. Face more of a threat coming from the north here. So let's. We don't know if we want to be pushing out quite yet. Also, stretching them really could be beneficial here. Let's get some perspective too on where we're going so we could. Drive south here to Bucharest. It's an intriguing proposition, isn't it? Mm hmm. I think I would rather have it come south. All right, so we captured a depot here. south. Yeah, okay. We'll keep the rifle division there, though. It's, it's very aggressive of me. Supplies are going to be just horrible for these guys for a couple of turns, like really bad. Um, but I really think it's going to force them into some decision making of them having to cast a wider net to try to stop us. I feel like if we're a little more conservative in our breakout, it's a little easier for them to contain us and slows down some of that progress we want. That could be a horrible assumption. We don't know yet. Uh, what I will do here is take this rail repair, start repairing here. Looking at the map, I'm pretty sure, yeah, north-south, I want to connect these things. Um, it's going to be great to get Odessa fixed up, but first I think I really need to get a north-south rail line here. So we're just going to move them all the way north, and then next turn they're in a little bit of a better position. Uh, on the note of the rail units, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the ones we have. Over there. Start fixing all of this. I now regret having sent that unit up there. Because this guy probably could have done it. Okay. So he can keep working towards Stellino, I guess. The other ones I have to highlight on for my blind eyes to be able to see this. Here's one. You already moved. And there are the other two. Already used you as well. Sometimes I just can't remember, so we, we go and we check to be sure. 
Excellent. Excellent. Well, in that case, I think what I am going to do is I'm going to um, look at my reserves here. I think I'm going to deploy some units here to the Crimea. We're looking at it. Where can I have them come in? It's probably just a little too close, isn't it? Do it there. Because of these, I really should have cleared these hexes. So I think that's why I can't do it anywhere else. Really like to do it at that port. That's not going to work for me. Can't do it in Odessa yet. Ah, okay. So I guess we'll do it here. Um, but looking at our reserves, I've got some rifle brigades here that I want to bring into action. So that way they can help with our push out of Odessa. So we're going to transfer these guys to the map. I mean, they, they're not going to be breaking through any defensive lines, but right now the situation we find ourselves in is we've expanded so quickly in the south that there is no defensive line to break through. So I'm, I'm just going to go all in, and the, the definition of the word reserve is just being thrown to the wind. Um, this guy's TOE 80%. I want to let him just get up to 100, or, well, not 100 maybe, but close to it. Um, some of these tank battalions really need more time, which is fine. You're good, though, so you can come in. But you're okay, too. Yep, that's fine. All right. I have this front up here. I will bring it in. I don't know when, though. I think what I want to do is wait for my south to get a little bit more static, and then I'll bring them in, and I'll do a bit of a kind of massive organization of some of the armies down there. Um, these SP units, we continue to continue to wait for the production lines. Mortar rocket, we're not going to do anything with. So that's where we're at there. I have been very tempted to actually go and build some rifle core because we do have the capacity to build more rifle core than we have right now. Um, no rifle divisions though, but rifle cores. The reason I'm not going to is when we look at our end of turn summary and it's, oh boy, really going to mess up remembering where that thing is. Turn summary. There we go. That was it. A little book with an arrow. Um, one of the reasons I'm not going to build any units right now is we have 147 under strength and 51 unready. We have a lot of a lot of units that really need the men, need the manpower. Um, so instead of splitting where all of our manpower is going. Uh, by building new units. I'm going to let us focus a little bit on these guys. Like, I mean, you look through here, 7,000, 8,000. Is that 5,000 I saw? Yeah, 5,000, 4,000, 8,000. It's just, we have so many units here that desperately need those men. Uh, it's just crazy to look at. 5,000. Normally, I would have all those guys on on refit status and all that too, but I need them on the front right now as we as we push for Dmitrovsk, which we'll just pretend like I said that correctly. Um, and then, yeah, I think from Odessa, we're going to kind of do two things. One, rush as quickly as we can towards the south, towards Bucharest, and I'm not, not going to pretend like, hey, these guys are going to make it all the way there, maintain supply lines or anything like that, but I think they can start the push towards... Uh, Selena with this port, which will help with the supply situation and really kind of forces them into a decision of what are they going to do to try to defend that. Um, 
and then those rifle brigades that I bring in will use to start building out a bit of a supply line, defensive line going south there to the port. And then from the port, we keep building on that until we get down to Bucharest. And then when it comes to pushing into, well, really, uh, the, the rest of Ukraine and a little bit towards Budapest and uh, Krakow and such, really we're going to be relying on these fronts, these armies, to, to do that. Because we're never going to bring in enough reinforcements and reserves into Odessa to, to take Bucharest, Budapest. I, we're not going to be able to take all of those just by bringing in new units to Odessa. Because I also need to consider new units for, okay, do I start bringing in some rifle corps, for example, towards Minsk to help push towards Minsk? Um, and, and finally just take it, because we're really not that close right now to taking Minsk. They've, they've started to really dig in here. They have great defensive terrain between us and Minsk. Um, really, our threat to Konigsberg hopefully uh, lessens the defenses around Minsk. Uh, if we take Konigsberg before Minsk, I, I think that's absolutely fantastic. There's, there's no complaints from me there. So, some general thoughts of where things are going and such right now. Going to now go ahead and do the depot management, and then we will end turn and see if they have any surprises for us this turn. The previous turn, they definitely surprised us up by Leningrad. through some of those air resupplies. All right, it's now the access logistics phase before their air. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little interesting looking at the mini-map too, right? Just their kind of total position with just this complete uh, inverted kind of C shape that we have going on, uh, little Pac-Man style, uh, eating its way across towards the west of Europe. Um, which, you know, I, I don't know, hey, on July 8th, here's where the front lines were drawn and all of that. I, I know some history of the war and such and some details, but I don't have all of that stuff memorized. I don't think this is how it, how it went. I think it was, I don't want to say a straight north-south line, but I think it was a little more linear north-south as they advanced west. We're, you look at this, I mean, we are really stretching them with so many hexes for them to defend which just plays right into our hands, by the way. This this is perfect for us. That breakout we had in Odessa was just... It, it's going to have real impact to the Axis player. Going through their air phase here. Doing quite a bit of recon, it sounds like. You look at it, right? These air groups they have, and this is perhaps a little gamey that I can see this, right? And this is a point of discussion amongst players, but... Um, they have a lot of fighters and bombers that are at pretty full strength here, right? Uh, there's quite a few. The weather has not been kind to us. Yeah, they're just doing recon. Come on. Almost there. Right. Let's see where they attack. Oh, there might not be any attacks. Interesting. Very interesting. It's not terribly so. Oh, see, this is why I don't say things. Um, we lost 90 armor. They lost 40. That's a pretty big attack. Yeah, that. That's why I don't say things. Because then that happens. So I think that would have been, was the 18th Panzer. And here, right, we had started to try to maybe envelop these units that were situated here, but they're pushing back our 14th Tank Corps pretty aggressively. Lost quite a few armor in those two attacks. But, oh, well, that's interesting. So they just rushed a panzer division straight through our line there. That, that'll that give us something to think about next turn. Here they're pushing back our motorized brigade with an infantry division. 
Oh, yeah, okay. So they're attacking along the Dnieper here. And they're coming south. Up here is Stellino. It's a little off screen, but they're pushing south through our line that we had put here, running due east west, but we held that attack. Oh, they're pushing on Leningrad again. This truly is why I don't ever say things like, oh, I guess they're not going to attack, because look at this. Okay. Oh my goodness, they broke through. Wow. Who would have thunk? I, I guess you, you get them desperate enough, though, and this is the type of stuff that happens. Because they, they know we're closing in on them. They know they're surrounded. I think I would have maybe moved south, then tried to break through, but hey, what do I know? Again, it could be a very, very good delaying tactic for them that works out very well in the end. Them taking that hex is no small feat. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Now, I really need to consider, right, how do I, how do I get a defensive line here to make sure that this entire defensive perimeter doesn't collapse and they can take Leningrad. Them taking Leningrad, let me tell you, not only is it the victory points, it's also the port that they can use for resupply. That's what would be so significant about it. Then, then we're getting very ahistorical there. <laughs> Army group north gets encircled, but everything's okay because they took Leningrad after being encircled. That would be quite the twist to the story. probably get me more subscribers and viewers, to be honest. Maybe I should let it happen. Alright. Now it is our logistics phase. Um, yeah, so there... I, I say this at the end of almost every episode in this series in particular. They give me something to think about every turn. They really do. Um, and I, I know that there's always... There's always some nitpicking of the AI in any Gary Grigsby game, right? Because it building an AI is always a difficult task, no matter what game you're developing. Developing a game as complex as a Gary Grigsby game, there's lots of ways in which people can, can find flaws in it. Um, but at, at face value, I do find it is a very competent AI. And although they may not be the decisions that I would make, I appreciate that they put me on my back foot and they do so in a way that that has some tactical or even strategic reasoning, even if I don't agree with it, even if I wasn't going to do it, even if it is a bit of a risk on their part, right? You, you can make an argument for a lot of these decisions that the AI is making. And I think that's one of the signs of of this AI being a good AI for a game so complex is that you you can understand sometimes why the AI is doing those decisions. Attacking Leningrad there truly is going to cause me some headache now. Now I really do need to think about how do I ensure they don't break through to Leningrad. I'll stop my babbling, though, and we'll transition over to the turn summary. 50,000 men lost, 800 guns, 600 armor, and 90 airframes. Order of battle, we saw a positive change of 37,000. This is a little scary, guys. The Axis saw a total positive change of 140,000 men. We got 400 guns, they got 1,900. We lost 60 armor, they got 230. And we gained 337 airframes to their just positive 7. So, ooh, ooh my. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what else to say there? Uh... 147 units still under strength, 51 still unready, so that continues to be an issue for us. Or a, a point of emphasis, I should say. Looking up here at Leningrad, we'll just real quick take a glance. Yeah, see, look at that. I gotta, I gotta come up with an answer to that now. Looking at the news events, RAF raids in 1943 is causing them some damage, and Soviet partisans continue their work. Everyone, thank you so much for giving this series a, a watch. Um, thank you for your support of this wonderful game and the genre that it represents. Uh, should you have any questions or comments, please toss them in the comments section below. 
again, I'll, I'll do my best to make sure this and the 1941 series do publish on time this weekend, but with the holiday plans, they may be a little delayed. And as always, strategy gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.